Okay, awesome. That was really fun. So, Miriam and I are here today, today to talk to you about Office 2019, a sampler of uh, a number of the features, and we'll do a demo. Before we jump right in, as many of you have heard, uh, on Monday we announced Office 2019. It is the next on-premises version of Office for Windows 10 and Mac. So starting on Monday, commercial customers can purchase Office 2019. And in the next few weeks, the Office 2019 server products will become available. Now, with every release of Office, we've added new functionality on top of what was already in existence in the product. And there's no difference with Office 2019. We've added ad additional features and functionality on top of the previous version of Office 2016 Perpetual. However, there's still a huge gap between Office 2019 and what we have in Office 365 Pro Plus. In Office 365 Pro Plus, we have features across collaboration, so think about real-time co-authoring, app mentions, features in intelligence, and security, and more. So the thing about Office 365 Pro Plus is that we keep adding um, features on a monthly basis, which is not the case with Office 2019. That's going just to be the one-time update. So with Pro Plus, it's the apps that you're all familiar with across web, mobile, PC, Mac. And it's the most productive, most secure, and lowest total cost of ownership version of Office. So you may be asking or thinking, hey, so what's the difference um, when I look at it? And one of the things is, if you can spot the difference very clearly, for Office 2019 Perpetual, we will state that as such. And then for Office 365, we're saying Office 365. With that, I'd like to jump into the demos. Um, I will be demoing some features coming to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook um, on my PC and then I'll hand it over to Miriam. And I think I'm on yeah. seven. Okay. So if I am a, um, I'm preparing a presentation on interior design, pitching to a potential partner that I want to work with. So in this deck, I have a number of uh, sections here and rather than you know talk her through planning and human factors and materials and blah, 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 blah and lose her halfway through that presentation we have a new feature called zoom and if I create a summary zoom I can select the slides in that zoom right it's already pre-selected for me and I can insert this slide. And what it does is it first centers the audience on, hey, what's the topic of the talk that I'm about to give? Gives you a sense of what we have discussed and then where we are going in this presentation. And so as I go through my slides, I don't have to jump out of presentation mode to be very clear about you know, what's coming next and what we've already discussed. So I'm putting together this deck. I'm thinking about the conversation I'm about to have with her. And I think, hey, this section's about human you know, factor to interior design. Maybe what I can do is do some real-time um, editing on this slide and so if I, I have a stylus on my pen. And what I'm thinking is, well, maybe, you know, we have eight chairs in this room. I want to maybe switch 
or give her an idea of what it would look like with fewer chairs. I can ink. Oh. Maybe just show her, hey, we can remove these chairs. It kind of brightens up the space. Um, this is how it would look like. And I'm doing this with the roaming uh, pencil case up top. And so that's across apps, across Word, uh, PowerPoint, Outlook. And you can do this with the different pen colors that we have um, on a touch screen with finger or pen. And I also think, well, maybe I can add some artwork to this room. And my very unsteady drawing turned to a shape. You know, you could do circles, squares, so forth. And this actually gives me an idea. So, you know, I, draw, I drew this fake Picasso on the wall. I can actually use that zoom function that I was uh, talking about earlier to do a slide zoom. And what that does is it allows me to jump to a particular slide. Um, that may not be chronologically next. So I imagine the conversation as we're talking about the chairs is, hey, what kind of material or you know, what are my options? And I can insert the slide that is about materials. Oh. Actually, I inserted the wrong slide. So let me do that again, slide zoom. I have this slide about laminate versus wood. And I can put this in my slide, almost like a piece of artwork. I can even add a border as if it's a photo frame. I can change the image if I don't necessarily want to lead to the slide, I want to show a different image. And I can return this to this slide once I go there. So let me show you what I mean. I'm here. I think at this point we may want to jump to talk about some materials. It brings me there. We have that conversation. And the next slide pops me right back. And then I can continue talking through the different configurations of a room that I want to have. So that's. Um, PowerPoint Zoom. I think that further down in this presentation, I might want to add um, some information about our sales pipeline. You know, we're an interior design firm. We care about the design and the human element to it, but we also care about our sales. And so I have this spreadsheet. And let me just. Um, highlight my data, I can insert a visualization. One that is new is the funnel chart, which is great for showing um, website conversions, sales pipelines, and I can insert this back into my PowerPoint presentation. Um, and so that allows me, gives me the more tools to make content um, for presentations, spreadsheets, analysis, and so forth. If I switch over to Word, you can see that I've applied the black theme here, um, which goes across the apps. And it just provides a little bit better contrast um, as you're reading through documents. What's great is that in learning tools, under view here, we've added um, and improved on tools that will help with reading fluency and comprehension. And so here, I've actually already applied some of these, as you can see. You have the ability to split words up by syllables, um, increase the spacing for text, change the page color for better focus. My personal favorite is sepia. It just makes me feel like I'm reading an old-timey book. We're going to be switching over pretty quick. We're going to be switching over pretty quick to my mic. Not yet, but just oh. in a minute. Miriam. <laughs> And then um, I also have this read aloud capability, which I know you guys might not be able to hear very well, but just to show you, you can change the speed if you need it to slow down. 
Um, and then there's also different voice options. So some of you may already use this previously, but we've added a number of improvements to this. And you know, for the features that I'm about that I just showed you and that Miriam's about to show you, all these features are already in Office 365 Pro Plus. So they're not net new to the product. They are a subset of the features that um, are already in 365. And then the last one here really quickly is that we have the focused inbox within Outlook. Um, so personally, like I get a lot of emails about concert tickets and Broadway shows that people and Microsoft are selling. I don't want that flowing into my focus inbox because they come in really fast, but I love being able to go there to see um, what kind of performances I can catch. So with that, let me hand it over to Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miriam, and I'll be going through a couple of features here for Office for Mac 2019. I'm going to start off, um, it's a fictional scenario. I'm working on a project around drones, and I'm creating this deck, this PowerPoint deck here, and I'm going to be showing a morph feature. So if I show you what I've already got started, I'm going to walk through. You can see the drone is uh, moving across the screens in a very cinematic motion. And this is the more feature. And the more feature actually takes, uh, they analyzes the data across multiple slides and puts them all together into one. So it's a very smooth moving uh, image. I didn't have to create additional slides or add um, animations to it. It actually did it for me. So now I've decided I actually want to add to my deck. I want to do some retail presence. And by doing this, I'm going to actually duplicate the slide and because I want to add content to the slide I'm going to go ahead and remove what's already there and I of course want to move the drone because I'd like to change up the slide a little bit and have a little more room to add in the graph that I will add later and let's quickly look at what that looks like when I've done that And there it goes across the slide. As you can tell earlier, I was kind of choppy when I drug it over, but it was actually seamless. So Morph actually does that for you, removes the choppiness that might have otherwise been in the slide. So now I've got that part of the deck done, but I want to add that graphic in there. I want to take and I want to do a 2D graph. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to go into the data, and this is like the states and the number of retail stores we have in those different states. And I can go over to maps. It will insert the map for me and I can resize this. And then you know what, I'd actually like to see what the representation is. So I'm going to go and add a chart element. And it adds in the counts there on the states. And I can take this and I can actually add it into my presentation and it shows a nice representation right in the deck. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and skip that part, and we're going to move on to the next thing I'm working on, which is a proposal. I think it would actually be really great to see about incorporating uh, having drones uh, check about Amazon Rainforest Health, like these things we can do and analyze. So I'm working on this proposal, but you know what? I keep getting people calling me, they're IMing me, they're sending me team messages, and it's really distracting. So what I'd like to do is cut that out so I can actually make my deadline, and by going into focus mode, I now can see my deck. I don't have any other distractions. The toolbars are gone. The start menus are gone. And I can go ahead and finish this up without being um, distracted. Lastly, we have this blog post going out. And I have a status that I need to send in Outlook. So I'm going to send a mail. But you know what? I need it to go out really close to that blog post. And I'm not going to be sitting at my desk 
and I'm not going to be there to push the button to make sure it sends at the right time. So I actually want to schedule. And this is the send later feature now with Mac. So I'll go ahead and create an email. And I can go ahead and click on the send. Send later. I can add all my content in. I can schedule for tomorrow because that's when the blog post is going to go out at about 2.30. And I'm going to click send. And it won't go out until that time. And that way I know I'm not going to miss my deadline. So those are the features I'm actually sh I've finished showing for 2019. I'm going to turn it back over to Chanda to close this out. Thanks, Mary. Great. So can anyone tell me um, what feature I'm using or I'm trying to use here that I just showed you? Yeah, which Zoom? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. So this is Slide Zoom. Um, and the reason I put it in here is because we were able to successfully demo all the features so I could skip through a bunch of slides. And I have a true or false. All the features in Office 2019 are already available in Office 365. Who says true? Who says false? It's true. All the features in Office 2019 are already in 365. So good job, majority of the room. So just to sum up, we talked about 2019. It's the next uh, release of the on-premises version of Office. It's not the newest or the latest. I mean, it is the newest for Perpetual, but it's not the latest, and it doesn't have all the features um, that we have in 365. Uh, so I think for you all, getting Office 365 Pro Plus will give you all those features. And if there are reasons that you are either on your journey to the cloud or you cannot move to the cloud, Office 2019 will be that next update over 2010, 2013, and Office 2016. With that, please evaluate the session. And then also um, feel free to come and ask us questions here after this talk. And we'll also be in the booths where Office 365 Pro Plus is. Um, we're happy to answer questions there all day today and tomorrow as well. And then for the lady that got the answer right, would you like a baseball cap? Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you all.